Ah uh, yes, NFTs, the non-fungible token. We've all heard the hype. NFTs. The NFTs. NFTs or non-fungible tokens. But what are they exactly? Well, Google defines it as a non-interchangeable unit of data stored on a blockchain, which is a form of digital ledger, whatever that means. In simpler terms, the future of collectible assets is digital. Uploading. Think of the Pokemon cards or the sports memorabilia you collected as a kid. Now digitize it and ensure proof of ownership. We've all heard the hype around the internet, but who really knows how to create an NFT from scratch? Well, let me show you. What's poppin' YouTube with your boy Justin, AKA Adobe, one Kenobi, back in this bitch with another mind altering tutorial. And today we are talking the legendary NFT. Now you heard what I had to say about it in the intro. So let's cut the crap and jump right into it. All right, so go ahead and open up After Effects and create a new composition. I'm going to name this custom NFT uh, main comp V1. I'm going to set the dimensions to 1080 by 1350. That's just a very popular social media dimension. Um, everything else should be good. Square pixels is fine. 23.976 is fine. And 20 second duration is fine. Um, now I'm going to right click in the composition timeline, go up to new solid, and I'm just going to create a blue solid. I'm gonna need three solids in total for my background. I'm gonna do blue red and yellow. So we're going to start off with blue. You'll see why in a moment here. Now I'm going to create a, another new solid. This one, it doesn't matter the color because we are just using it to put an effect on it. We're going to rename it element just to be organized. And now we're going to go up to our effects and presets panel and we're going to search for element. Now this is a paid plugin from videocopilot.net. So if you want to follow along, you will have to purchase that. Now drag element onto our second solid and then we're gonna go up to click scene setup and I'm going to import this 3D model of a Game Boy that I found because my NFT is gonna be Game Boy themed. Now I'm gonna take this a second to let you know if you are planning on selling this as an NFT, whatever materials, 3D models that you do use in this, make sure you have the licensing for so you don't get into any legal trouble when you are trying to sell these. Now with that being said, you're gonna see that this menu box popped up. We're gonna hit load material and use auto normals. Now you'll see our Game Boy model popped up, but it's very small. So we're just gonna click normalize size and that's gonna make it a little bit easier to work with. Now you'll see this is a full 3D model. It doesn't have any textures on it yet, but we can rotate it around and you see that it is a 3D object. So what we're gonna do is go down to presets and now we're gonna have a bunch of preset textures. I'm gonna take this glossy red one and drop it onto the body. And then we can just open this drop down menu, go to the color options and set our diffuse color to a light blue to match the first background that we created. I'm gonna be going for this sort of monotone effect. So if the background is blue, the Game Boy itself is gonna be blue. Now we're gonna go back to our basic settings here and we're just going to turn the glossiness percentage up to 100. So when we have it in 3D space, it is sort of glossy and shiny. And we're just gonna take this wireframe um, preset and drop that on the screen because I think it looks pretty cool. And then the back cartridges, we're just gonna make this black glossy preset just so it kind of blends in and it's not the main center of focus. Now that we're happy with that, we're gonna hit okay and we're gonna see our Game Boy in 3D space. We're gonna go up to render settings here and then hit lighting and you'll see we have a bunch of different presets. Um, I'm just gonna filter through a couple of these until I find one that has the look and feel that I'm going for. Yeah, I think that basic looks pretty good. It makes it a little bit lighter than the other ones. Uh, and I'm just gonna go back into scene setup and increase the ambient there a little bit and increase the diffuse so it's a little bit brighter. All right, that's a little bit too bright now. So I'm gonna go back to single light in my lighting presets and I think that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go about one second into the timeline, go up to group one and you'll see this particle size parameter. Basically, the Game Boy is being recognized as a particle. So we're gonna set some keyframes for it and we're just going to scale it up from zero. Um, so it kind of grows into frame and it looks sort of organic. So we'll put zero at the first keyframe and about 12 on the second. And then if you play it back, it should scale up from zero. 
Now we're gonna right click on our first keyframe, easy ease out, do the same on our second keyframe, but click easy ease in. So now it just ramps in nice and smooth. See if we play that black, that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing we are going to do is we are gonna go to our particle rotation and we're gonna set a keyframe on the Y rotation. Now we are going to move ahead a few frames or a few seconds rather and set the keyframe to two full rotations so that once it grows in, it starts spinning. And this is where we're going to do our transition to the different color schemes. Now again, use your keyframe assistant to ease out and ease in your two keyframes. Now go ahead and set a scale keyframe at the end here, move ahead about a second and set the scale back down to zero. So it scales up to 12, does two full rotations and then scales back down to zero, ending the animation motion. And now what we're going to do is just kind of re-time some of these so not everything's happening so quickly back to back to back. I'm just gonna give a little bit of space in between just so the movement feels a little bit more organic. And now we're gonna select the keyframes, go up to our graph editor, and we are just going to ramp these up to about 60% influence. Um, pretty much any keyframing we're doing today, we're going to be going into our graph editor and setting the influence to about 60% ramp. Now that's looking pretty good. We are going to go to our position keyframe, select them and do the same thing with the 60% influence inside of our graph editor. And now the overall motion is very smooth, organic, and it's taking about the right amount of time. I might just move these scale keyframes in so everything's happening. Boom, all right, that's looking pretty nice. So now we're gonna go about a second into the first rotation and we're going to we're going to split our background layer and we're going to split our element 3D solid. Um, with the second background layer, we're going to change it to a nice red color. And then we're gonna go into scene setup for our second 3D layer. We're gonna duplicate the texture preset and we're gonna change the diffuse color to red and drag it on. So now you'll see the Game Boy body is this nice bright red. We're gonna hit okay. And now if we go back into After Effects, you'll see halfway through the rotation, the background and the color of the Game Boy switch and we get this nice monochrome look. Now we are going to do the same thing once more, split and change the color of the background to a nice bright yellow. I think that looks nice, hit new and then do the same thing with the Game Boy, go into scene setup, duplicate your texture, change the diffuse color to a bright yellow and drag that onto the body, hit okay. And now back in After Effects, we'll see we go blue, red, and yellow finally before it animates out. And I think that's looking pretty cool. That's basically the hardest part of our tutorial today. We are gonna be adding some finishing touches, but that is the main portion. Um, now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our text tool and we're going to create this cool loading graphic just to stylize it a little bit. We're going to pick um, our proper font. I do like something like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a little rectangle outline. And this is gonna be the outline of sort of the loading bar. And now I'm just going to rename that to loading bar outline and then set the stroke to about five. And the next thing I'm going to be doing, actually, let's make that a little bit smaller and move it over a bit. All right, so duplicate that rectangle layer and then give it a full white fill. So now you see we have a full bar there. And now we're gonna take our mask tool, make a mask around that second bar, hit a keyframe for mask path, move over a couple of frames, and then move your mask off screen and then ease in and ease out as we usually do. And you'll see that the mask is animating in and giving the look of a loading bar coming to completion. So I think that looks pretty cool just to start off the animation. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim the end of this loading graphic here so that uh, it disappears as soon as the Game Boy comes in. All right, that's looking pretty nice. Cool, so we've got the, the main portion of the animation done. Now what I'm gonna do is just add some red, yellow, and blue accent lines that sort of 
grow across the screen horizontally. I'll use them as reveals. I'll use them just to add some texture and some depth to the overall animation. Um, what we're going to do is create the line, uh, add a trim path, and then we are going to keyframe the end parameters, uh, move ahead, add another keyframe, ease in, ease out as we usually do. And then we're going to start off at zero and go up to 100. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the start keyframes, only reversed. We'll go from 100 to zero. So that way the line animates in and as it's animating across the screen, the tail will follow it out um, just like this. And this is going to reveal our Game Boy sort of acting as a transition between that loading graphic and the first Game Boy coming up. Now that's pretty much it. I'm going to duplicate these a couple times and just work it to a point where I'm, I'm happy with it, but you can play around with this. There's not a specific way to do it. Um, just add the accent lines wherever and however you see fit. Um, and it's a nice little finishing touch on the overall animation. Now, again, this is an NFT. So I know this is a very loosely based tutorial because an NFT could pretty much be any sort of digital asset. But I thought this was a really cool way to kind of introduce people into the process that would be creating a custom 3D NFT of this particular style. And there we have it, folks, another mind blowing video. This one might even help you get a little bit richer. Now, if you enjoyed the content today, do me a favor, hit me with a thumbs up on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below what type of tutorials you want to see moving forward. And finally, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Now, without further ado, I'll see you next video. Peace.